What's up everyone, Steven here from TechMaker. In the last episode, we started building out our ERC721 contract for our generative NFT project. And we're gonna basically just keep going with that in this episode. So I was looking around and we talked in the last episode about how we wanna fix this URI problem that we have. I was looking around in the ERC721 documentation and we're using this ERC721 and we're also using an extension called URI storage. And if we look back in ERC721, let me do a quick search for a uh, base URI here. So basically, um, there's this function base URI which returns an empty string. Um, and if you can read this comment and see if this uh, is present basically, uh, then what will happen is that our token URI becomes the base URI plus the token ID. Otherwise, I guess it's just whatever URI you set. So this is returning just an empty string all the time. So what I think we need to do is actually override this um, and return something different. So what we want to do, let's say that we want to have this be like HTTPS, um, and like our url.com slash nfts slash one or something like that. Okay, so this won't be the real one, but it's fine for testing purposes for the moment. Um, also, let me like indent this stuff the way that I like it. Okay, so basically what I think we need to do is according to the documentation, if it works the way that we think, Okay, so what is this error telling me? Uh, function is missing override. Override. Okay, so what do we call that? HTTPS, da 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 da. Okay, so that's what we want here. So that becomes our base URI, and then it should append the ID, so we should get a one there. Okay, so let's run this test and see what happens. I'm not actually sure this works. So this will be a, a new thing. I haven't read all the code, but some of the code didn't quite make sense the way that I was understanding it, but let's see. If this works, I'll be happy. Um, huh. Okay, so what it did, okay, that's interesting. So sorry, this is gonna be a little bit more exploratory of a video than I thought. So just kind of, reading through this code. So basically it says, um, if there is a base URI, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, basically pack together this base URI with a token ID to string. And for some reason, it added our google.com here. So what we can maybe do is get rid of this set token URI business because I bet there's something that says like, you know, there's probably some logic somewhere that returns the ID if there's no token URI. Let's try this again. This should be interesting. If this works, I'm gonna be really happy um, because it solves a problem for me. Um, and it does. So cool. So now what this means, because what we're gonna do, and I'm gonna explain more of this later, but we're gonna need to swap out the base URI at some point, and we're gonna need to build that out so we can test it. So uh, what we're gonna need to do is write a function. Um, so we're gonna say like function set uh, base URI, and it's gonna take a string byte, uh, how do I do this? Just a string and then new you new base URI. Let's see, this will tell me what to do. And then we'll wanna set this to only owner um, in the future. And then we'll say like base URI equals um, new base URI. I'm actually gonna go ahead and comment this all out. What is this gonna say? String, yeah, that's what I was looking for, memory. And then what is that upset about? Oh, that doesn't exist. So we need to have like uh, address, no, string memory private uh, base URI or something. 
Nope, that doesn't like that. So string expected identifier identifier already declared. Doesn't like that I have that. So I'll just say um, custom base URI or something like that. And then we'll say custom base URI. Okay, so I'm gonna comment these out for now and we're gonna write tests for these later. Um, so essentially, um, we'll just come back to that. But I wanted to go ahead and kind of shim that in so that I know that I need to do it later. In actual fact, let's go ahead and do one thing uh, which will be useful is we can actually go ahead and set the uh, custom base URI here. So what we can do is say like, um, first of all, let's uncomment this and we'll say custom base URI equals and we can add a argument, add an argument to our um, constructor here. So we'll say um, custom base URI. Kind of one convention that I like is to have the underscores on different sides for these as arguments versus um, actually setting it. Okay, so now what's going to happen is this is going to break on our deployer. Before I even forget that, let's change this down here. Okay, so basically what we've done is we're saying now we can pass in what our default URL is going to be, our custom URL, um, into the constructor, and then we're returning that down here in the base URI. So in our uh, where was that in the migrations so what we want to do here is in our deployer we'll pass in this URL as a default starting point not what I wanted how did I all right here we go copy that and paste there let's run our tests again and let's see if this is still working so this is like in TDD this is the red green refactor paradigm, right? So we wrote the test, they passed, and now we're refactoring things to take arguments and have it set up a little bit differently so that it's more extendable as we go forward. And it's still green, so that's good. So this video took a slightly different direction than I thought it would, but I think it's a good place to actually just make this video about how to manage these URIs, as at least how I'm seeing it. Um, so again, you need to like kind of do your own research, read through the code, and kind of figure out how you want to handle all of these things if you're doing a real project, but this is how I'm looking at it. So what I want to do basically is write a new test, and I'm going to say it allows the contract owner to change the base URI. So we'll say it allows the contract owner to change the base URI. And then we'll say async um, like this so that we basically have everything set up so what I'm gonna do is say um, we'll grab our frog here again and we will basically say uh, await frog dot set base URI and then what we'll do is say, um, um, you know, actually, let's copy this entire test um, here, like this. And then below, and I know like this is not exactly great practice, but it's uh, okay for the moment. We can refactor it later. We'll say await um, frog dot set base URI and then we're just gonna say HTTPS colon slash slash other URL dot com slash NFTs slash and then what we want to do is grab this and we want to expect that it's equal to this other URL now so we'll say other URL dot com slash NFT slash one so let's run this and we should get an error saying that function does not exist.
and uh, let's see here exactly so let's come back to our code so let's just uncomment this and I'm gonna copy this same sort of nomenclature here okay and we'll run the test again and make sure that it passes and we're gonna need to make sure that only the contract owner can do this right so what I'm gonna do is actually start by installing uh, I think it's called truffle assertions okay and then back over in the code in the test code above this even I'm gonna say const truffle assert equals re uh, require truffle assertions okay then what we need to do is write another test and it says it does not allow anyone but the contract owner to change the base URI like that a sync open up our function there and basically what we want to do is just say uh, frog await frog dot deployed and then in order to simulate somebody not the owner uh, deploying this we need to just send uh, it from somebody who's not the owner now in truffle the owner is always address addresses zero so the first address in the list unless you specify otherwise so uh, what we can do is just assume that's true and we'll say um, await actually let's see so we'll say truffle assert dot reverts and then we'll say uh, frog set base URI and then we'll just say HTTPS attacker URL dot com something like that and I think we may need to await this let's see and we'll oh that's not what I wanted we'll run the test again and it's probably gonna tell us like hey it was it was supposed to fail but it didn't uh, let's just see wish these tests were a little bit faster yeah assertion did not fail okay so what we're gonna do to get around that actually is look at uh, let's see where is it it should be in our node modules open Zeppelin utils maybe um, security nope uh, access ownable so basically what we want to do is say that our contract is ownable and then there's this only owner modifier and it's going to start by requiring um, that the owner is the message sender and you can see here basically that the constructor has a set owner message sender um, function inside of it so all we need to do is import this into our contract so that's going to be import uh, at open zeppelin slash contracts slash what do we say access slash ownable dot sol like that and then all we need to do here is say ownable and then our uh, set base URI we can say only owner I wonder if we need the public if we have only owner seems like it okay so we'll have only owner there and let's see if that has a does that have um, yeah ownable caller is not the owner so that's sort of the standard failure message um, so what we can do is actually pass that in as a second argument and make sure that the message is correct which can be important if you have multiple things that can revert um, but let's run this and let's see so that adding that ownable uh, bit is gonna help us a lot in our next video as well um, but let's see assertion did not fail did I change the right method on here uh, 
set base URI public only owner. Oh, it's because I didn't say who it was from. <laughs> Oops. Okay, so we need to actually uh, back out. Let's just back out this only owner. Um, we're going to need to run this test again um, from... So what we want to do here is say from and then accounts five because that's not the owner okay so we'll run the test and it should also not fail uh, I just want to make sure that this the assertion is still failing um, before we add back the code so the reason it did not fail previously is because we actually were sending it from the owner because by default it gets sent from the owner um, so sorry wrong place here okay so we're good with that now let's put that back only owner and run it one more time and now it should be green because this is actually coming from somebody else but let's see because I've spoken too soon before okay now we're good if that last bit wasn't clear at all what you can do is come over here back into our test and you can switch this to be accounts zero Actually, we can do that, and we'll just see that it fails because it won't actually revert. Um, but anyway, so I'll fix it back uh, later. I just want to like show you how to look at this in case you were confused about why it you know did or didn't work uh, in some of these examples. So accounts zero is the owner. Um, so I'm just going to leave a comment here, not the owner. Okay. That's pretty much it for this video. Um, in the next video, we're going to actually uh, hook up the buying bit um, and make sure that the owner, which we just set up, receives the money um, for each token, uh, for each NFT that we generate um, that somebody mints. And I want to make sure that um, we can actually mint multiple at once and all this kind of stuff. So we're going to get more into the actual utility in the next episode.